The new link extractor add-on with deep crawl functionality that allows you to crawl through websites and extract both internal and external links. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. So a couple of housekeeping things. My name is Ryan Borden. This is a program called Scrapebox. If you don't have Scrapebox, you can jump over here to scrapebox.com, roll down to the bottom and grab it before the deal ends. Also, once you do that, you're going to want to head over to scrapeboxtips.com, sign up for free tips. I'm going to give you videos, tips, all kinds of advice, even on how to make money with Scrapebox, all for free. Now, once you're done with that, you obviously need the link extractor add-on. Add-ons are free with the core purchase of Scrapebox. So you buy Scrapebox, it's a lifetime license, and then you get all the add-ons with it. Premium plugins are separate, but we're talking about add-ons, whole list. In the add-ons, if you want to install it, you go to add-ons, show available add-ons, you find the link extractor, which is right here. You install it or update it if you don't have the latest version. Once that's done, you close out, you go back to add-ons and you launch it from here. Now, the link extractor, the purpose obviously is to pull links. So you load up a website and you can get all of the other pages on that same website that it links to. So if I go, for example, to Scrapebox, and I wanted to get all of the links internally, so all this menu item up here, for instance, that would be internal links, so right here. And then if I wanted to get external links that that website links to, such as uh, scrapeboxfact.com, for example, and any other links it links to, that would be external links, so outside of that domain name. There is the option to pick up only do follow links if you only want that. Um, obviously, you can turn any one of these options on and off. You can load a list from a file. So this is a list of websites. Uh, load full websites with HTTPS. So you do not want to load in domains. This is a website. So domain.com is a domain. That doesn't work. We need an HTTPS or an HTTP colon forward slash maybe www if it's a lot or whatever, but domain.com. That is what's called a URL. You can Google it. Um, your computer will understand this. Your web browser, when you put this in, it actually adds this part before it sends it out into the world because without it, it won't work. Um, but Scrapebox needs you to needs to understand what you want to do with it, so you have to make sure it's like that. Okay, that's covered. So we can load a list from a file. This is a text file. We can load URLs from Scrapebox itself. So if we have been scraping for keywords and we have a list of URLs we got from Google or Yahoo or Bing, etc., we can and the list is setting here, we can import that. That's what this does, load from Scrapebox. It pulls in whatever list you have loaded in here. Whether you loaded it in manually or scraped, it doesn't matter. And then load URLs from Clipboard, pretty straightforward if you copy you if you copy them to clipboard, of course, then this is the equivalent of pasting them. Start and stop is simple. We'll do that in a second. The deep crawl functionality is new. Historically, the link extractor would only work with the page you loaded in. So if we loaded in scrapebox.com, it would get all the internal and or external links from this page specifically. Obviously, there are other pages on this website. For example, if we go to add-ons, the link extractor has its own page in here. All of these are individual pages we can go to, for example. And then same thing would be with the premium plugins. So we can go look at like the expired domain finder, or the email scraper, yellow pages scraper, metrics checker, all of these things, right? We can click on it and then we see its own page with the, its own URL. This lets you crawl through. Level one is the root. It will only scrape internal or external links from the pages you load in. Pretty straightforward. Levels two through five is the different story, right? So what happens is it's gonna load up a website and it's only gonna crawl internally, but it will list the external links for each page. So what does that mean? It means, and I'll show you this, I like we'll run it at the end of this video, but it means if I go to scrapebox.com and then I go to plugins, and then I go to the email scraper, and then the email scraper has options and filters link, and I go here, this is a pop-up, so it won't matter, but a screenshot. So, um, and then, you know, say there's another one, so I go see more add-ons, right? Etc. It's gonna crawl through all those levels of Scrapebox itself, and then along the way, it's also gonna list any external links it encounters on any page. So let's say you put it on level five, and let's say there's, I'm making up numbers, let's say there's 28 pages on scrapebox.com, right? So it's gonna eventually give you that whole list of 28 pages from scrapebox.com. 
because they're internal. And if we've also selected external, it's going to give you a list of any of the external links that are listed on those 28 pages. It does not work as a crawler where it's going to go to those external links and then start crawling through those and getting internal and external links as well. So like it links to Scrapebox FAC. It's not going to go to Scrapebox FAC and now start crawling through this domain as well because it's a whole different domain name. So it will stay inside of the domain names that you load in. Even if you go to level five for internal links and then for external links, it'll list each one of those pages what it links to. However, if you want to crawl deeper, you could take the output from that. So all the external links load them back in and then begin to crawl internally and externally through all of those and keep going and make it a crawler. Just bear in mind as you start to go through, if you took external links and let's say there's 50 external links on scrapebox.com and I load those in, now I'm going to get all the internal pages from those. And let's say they each have 28 pages as well. Well, now my list just ballooned up and then all those external links, you could be into thousands and thousands, and pretty soon you could be into millions and millions of URLs, and your machine might not be able to handle it, and or it might take forever, because the internet is a big place. Okay, so that is how the crawler works. Now, we do have an export option, but this export option is only going to export data in the grid here. So data that you see it doesn't export the actual links. Those are auto saved into the data folder. So if you click data folder, you can see here are other scrapes that have been done. For example, here are a bunch of, you know, whatever, right? So this is what it looks like the output. And that comes from the data folder, which is all automatic, you don't actually have to export anything unless you want to know statuses, etc. Now we have settings, settings, let you control connections. This goes up to 500 connections. For most machines, I would recommend something in the one to 200 range because the machine, the DNS, the memory, the processor has to be able to handle it, right? So especially, you know, Windows is, um, I believe this is add on is available on Mac as well. But Mac will typically you want to run lower connections on Mac than Windows, Windows can typically handle higher connections. However, you can run it up to 500. But you know, results may vary, it might crash. Also, um, on Windows, you can run an unlimited number of instances. So you could just stamp out one, two, three, four instances. And if you wanted 500 connections, it would be better to stamp out five instances running 100 connections each. So you have like five windows running, or even, you know, you could stamp out three instances running 200 connections each and get to 600 connections and be even better, or go up to 1000, you know, above 1000, 2000 connections, Windows starts to flake out. Um, so you can try that. But you know, see what see what it can handle and your DNS will be your choke point for most people just so you know, it'll be the first choke point you encounter. So if you have problems with the DNS of your server or your home or business internet, then grab Google public DNS, you can Google for that. Uh, there's other public DNSs as well, any of them of the big players are going to work and be faster for the most part than any kind of home or business internet usually. Um, and oftentimes faster than server companies if it's an inexpensive server. If you're paying 300 bucks a month for the server, they probably have solid DNS, right? But there's no need for that. It'd be better to buy a cheaper server and buy several of them and do you know free DNS that's public and you're going to get farther. Okay, scalability lesson aside, let's talk about the settings. So you got connections, delay in seconds. Um, this only works if you're using one thread, but you can slow it down. This is particularly useful if you have, if you're getting only internal links from a domain name, or if you're crawling through it, then, you know, you don't want to use 500 connections on, uh, you know, a random, like if you're pulling from churches or you're pulling from like, uh, local plumbers websites, they're probably hosted on cheap hosting. And if you run 500 connections and try to crawl through that, you could crash the website just cause it's not used to handling that many. They don't get 500 customers at once. So like it just doesn't happen. Right. So that's where a delay comes in handy, put it to one connection and then set a delay, ignore links with more than so many characters, zero to disable that if you run into links that are like 500 characters long, and it's causing problems, a thousand characters, whatever. Read timeouts. These are just um, timeouts. 10 is a really great number. You can adjust that if you know, up or down and play with it if you need to. That's how long to wait before it skips a URL, skip processing when site is larger. If you get into massive websites, that can slow things down. And if you're working in mass, 
with a huge list, you can, you know, set something up there. Five or 10 megabytes is nice, but otherwise, for the most part, leave it at zero. Do not grab links with HTTPS. So if you only want HTTP links, automatically randomize links after grabbing can be handy if you're using the automator or if you're taking these and putting them into something else automatically. That way you're working with a randomized list. Uh, you can randomize URLs after loading as well. If you have a bunch, this is handy. If you have a bunch of domains in your list and you know you have a bunch of URLs from one domain and then a bunch of URLs from another domain and they're in alphabetical order because in the main scrape box, if you put them in here and click this button or depending on how you load them in, they may it will alphabetize them and keep all the URLs from one domain together. Or if you just had that list of a bunch of URLs for some reason, because you have your data from XYZ, which is very normal, then um, you're loading and you're running a bunch of connections. What's gonna happen is the link extractor goes in sequential order down. So if you load in 50 URLs from one website and say extract internal links, and you have this set to 200 connections here, it's going to take the first 200 URLs at once. So all 50 from one website and all 50 from the next website. If you randomize on loading, then you get a bunch of different random domain names. And let's say you have 10,000 different domain names in here and 100,000 URLs total, then it's going to be pulling connections from different domain names and you're not going to crash that website. Hopefully that makes sense. That's what that's for. Treat subdomains as external links. That just gives you the ability to treat subdomains as external links. So they're not going to get scraped if you're doing internal only. That's, you can set that as well, obviously. Save links in batches of X, right? So I want to save them as 10,000 or 100,000 or a million. Again, those are saved in the data folder. That again can be handy one, so that if you are have some sort of program picking up that data from the data folder or the automator working with it, then it, you know, one scrape box instance has an automator picking up new files and another scrape box instance is scraping them in the first place, like creating these files, then that keeps things flowing rather than just waiting till it's done. And it's one massive file. Also, sometimes if you're trying to take this data and do something else with it, scrape box can handle massive files, like hundreds of millions of URLs but that doesn't mean that the next program you put this data into or your Excel spreadsheet or your Google sheet or whatever you're doing can handle that much data. So you might want to break it up. Lots of reasons there. Custom user agent. I'm not going to go into what user agents are. It's how it's basically the, I'm going to make this real simple. It's kind of, it's not a version number, but if you want to think about it that way of, um, your browser. And so different websites want to keep track of what browsers are using it and that sort of stuff. But they also sometimes will block certain user agents. And so they're saying, no, we're not going to let you see this data for whatever reason, maybe a bunch of spammers are using that user agent. And so they've blocked it and you have, and you know, Scrapebox happens to be using it as well for some reason, just because these are common on the internet you can get a custom user agent. If you don't know what to put here, leave it blank. If you're having a problem and you want to test this, just go to Google and say, what is my user agent? What is my browser user agent? And it's going to come up and tell you, or you can Google for a list of browser user agents and they are massive. Um, what is my user agent? Here it is. It's going to tell you, uh, well, I guess it's going to tell you stuff about it. You can click on a website and it'll tell you, or you can say list of browser user agents, right? And then we can get like a list of user agents. Well, latest Chrome user agents, for example, and advertisements. And so here's a list of different user agents, right? And so we could copy and paste these in here. Latest Chrome user agent, just try that, for example. And so anyways, you can Google and experiment with that. Not going to go deep into that. Um, I have one in here for some test I was doing. We're just going to leave it. It doesn't matter. 99% of the time is going to work with or without this. These two things are the last things to note. Remove URLs containing, remove URLs not containing. For example, if I wanted to remove URLs, if I do not want about us pages, I can put about in here because for the most part, a website's going to have, I don't know if there's one here on scrapebox.com, but um, uh, or policy. Let's say the policy page it has the word policy in it, right? This is just terms and conditions. I could put policy in here because I don't want policy pages because I don't care about terms and condition pages, right? Or if I wanted to remove URLs not containing because I only wanted to pick up contact forms, for example, this is a common use. Um, so I can put the word contact in here in whatever language or whatever. Basically, you're looking at the URL structure and 
If I go into contact us, here it is. The word contact is in the URL, so it will match. If I wanted to only pick up, I don't know, this has the word add-ons in it. I could do that, right? You can pick up URLs containing or not containing different things, right? So I'm going to clear that, but those are filters and those happen on the fly. Also, this is going to remove duplicates automatically. So if the same URL keeps popping up, it's only going to list it once. So don't have to worry about that. So let's take a website here and try it. Um, let's just put it in. Actually, we can pick up Scrapebox since we're messing with it. And let's go back to the home page. Keep it simple. Pop it in here. This is an example of how you load it in here. So I have it on the clipboard right now. I have it loaded in there so I can load it in. Um, I could put this in a text file as well, just like think notepad or .txt file, whatever. Load from file, I'm going to load from Scrapebox and it pulls it in. I could load it from clipboard, it pulls it in, right? So I'm going to pick up internal and external links and I'm just going to hit start. We're going to see just this. So there are 17 internal links to other Scrapebox pages, scrapebox.com pages, and six external links. I can see in my data folder, we can look at this. And we can see that it links to... Um, here's a blog post it links to, it links to different scrape box pages that are internal. Obviously there's a PayPal link where you can buy scrape box. And then here's a YouTube link where you can get scrape box videos and the fact.com, etc. Right. Remember though, when I go to export, all I'm getting is these, this data here. So I could see that there's 17 internal links and six external links. I can see completed and the URL and I can get that status export it as Excel, export not completed entries to a file so that I can run them again or do with that and export error status to a file. Again, so I can process that or try again or, or look at it and see what the problem is or, or whatever, depending on your use case, right? So if I wanted to now crawl deeper and let's say go, let's just go five levels deeper, the fun of it. I don't know how long it'll take, but let's try it. Hit go. Now it is, again, it, first it scraped scrapebox.com. It took those six and the 17 and it loaded them all in here and well it just looks like it loaded internal links to start and it's going to scrape through all of those pages and then keep going and so i have all of these links here and it looks like it finished and popped everything in the data folder and so we can go ahead and here and see and see now we have all of these links right and so basically that's how it worked that is the link extractor and of course we could check do follow if we wanted to check do follow. And then the last thing I do want to note is it does use proxies, right? So the proxies get loaded in here in your core of scrape box. This has been this way if you're a historic scrape box user for like 15 years, right? Well, since it came out um, and you pop, so you put the proxies in here and you check the use proxies box that's pulled on startup. So whenever I launch the link extractor add on, it says, are there proxies in here and is the use proxies box checked? And if it is, then this will use proxies. And you can see right here, I have 50 proxies loaded. That's your telltale sign. If I were to uncheck the use proxies box and go to the link extractor and launch it, now we will see proxy zero. So if you're having trouble, a troubleshooting step is it could be that you have bad proxies loaded in here. And if you see proxies here, you can turn it off and run a test. Obviously don't run five levels deep with a massive list without using proxies, but that is your, your testing point. Obviously down here, you can get great data as well for URLs, errors, proxies, internal and external links, etc. right? So that is the new link extractor. This is the 2024 version in the middle of 2024. Of course, you'll see new versions as they come out. You can always just update them. Scrapebox is a lifetime license and just go here to the link extractor add-on and then you just um, update the add-on, right? Or you can update all add-ons. So that is the link extractor add-on and that is how it works. Thanks for watching this Scrapebox video. For more Scrapebox videos, click the subscribe button down below and then click the bell. And then check out these other great Scrapebox videos.